All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for, for joining us for um, this preview of the 2024 season. Um, we decided to do a, um, a lunch and learn on the 2024 season because uh, we've got a lot of a lot of new programs and we're <clears throat> starting a new site uh, that a lot of you all uh, have um, learned a lot about over the past couple of years with the surveys we've done there, which is the uh, the burial ground. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the new programs that we have, especially this spring, and then the offerings that we have with the uh, the work on the uh, on the burial ground. But um, what um, uh, what I'm going to do is I will um, uh, Chris and Liz uh, created a, uh, a PowerPoint a slideshow um, of the uh, of the this season's offerings, and I'll get to that in one second. But what I wanted, to, what we're going to do is go through chronologically the programs that we have, and then also at the end, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, the registration process. It's going to be a little bit different this season. Um, I think it'll allow for some more uh, flexibility, which I'm excited about. So, but um, I will um, go ahead and share screens right now, and um, for. Uh, Liz, Chris, Tessa, and Robert, whenever you all need your slide advance, just let me know. And I'll have you all talk about the programs that you all are doing. Um, and so can everybody share, see my screen? You can? Okay, awesome. Um, let's see, I think we're still, uh, we're still recording. Um, let me make, make sure. Uh, yeah, we're still recording here. Good deal. Well, um, for the 2024 programs, we've uh, our programs this year are going to start in the spring and or the early, actually late winter with a garden restoration workshop. And I'm not sure if Robert has been able to sign on. If you are, Robert, go ahead and unmute and, and uh, you can interrupt me at any minute. But what um, we've got uh, starting out this season is a special program that's going to be run by Robert Marr. Myers, our head horticulturalist, who is working on uh, restoring the uh, Bassett House Garden. Otherwise, uh, it's been known as Oriental Garden. We're calling it the Bassett House Garden today. Um, and it is a, um, a Japanese-inspired uh, garden landscape over at the President's House, where uh, Yola spends time um, at the, in was designed in, in the 1940s. Um, Robert's going to be uh, getting some more information on the Bassett Garden, but what um, what you all are going to be participants will be doing in this project is uh, restoring some of the bamboo fencing that's in in and around the garden, uh, some of the retaining walls that are uh, timber walls, and then uh, potentially uh, getting some of the beds ready for uh, for plantings. But um, and then of course you know with this this one just like any there'll be tours uh, offered the, to give you all some more context on this garden landscape of the landscape around Montpelier and some other uh, walks and talks. And this this program is March 7th through the 9th. So I think that's uh, Thursday, Friday, and uh, Saturday. So, um, and I know Robert was dealing with a leaking water pipe at his house, so he might not have been able to, to sign, on, uh, sign on today. Um, and then the, the next program in line is the uh, lab analysis uh, expedition. And um, Liz, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, so the lab expedition starts on St. Patrick's Day this year, March 17th. And it's an exciting year because we will be analyzing, mending, labeling, and conduct pattern analysis on ceramics from the past several seasons of work from the Overseer's House site. This program will also be conducting iron conservation on Overseer's house site artifacts. So you'll get to gain experience conducting electrolytic reduction, sandblasting, dremeling, coating and sealing of the artifacts, and um, getting a chance to get some behind the scenes tours as well for the Montpelier storage facilities, curatorial tours with Jennifer Powers, and a restoration tour with Tessa. So it should be a really great week and it will be playing with lots of ceramics and iron objects. Um, hope you guys can join. 
And what I'm really excited about this one as well is, is the um, how we're guiding our analysis this year is based on the survey that you all helped us with on questions about the Overseer's House. And this is a survey, a Google form that, that Liz uh, did, up, did up with us. And basically what came out of that was there's a lot of folks that wanted to learn more about how the Overseer's Household um, uh how the overseer's household interacted with the households of the enslaved community. And so lot, the work we're going to be doing is uh, some of it will be like the pattern analysis is comparing what's at the overseer's house site with neighboring households over at what we, what we call the field quarter, or probably was the homes of the enslaved uh, blacksmiths because the blacksmith site and those um, the field quarter sites as we uh, as we've called them in the past are in close proximity to each other. And we've actually found patterns in common between the two. Is that like tea time? Yep, exactly. And it'll be interesting to see what artifacts we find, like in terms of the iron artifacts with uh, some of the, in common with some of the blacksmith site. So, and what that, what exactly that relationship was, which would be cool. So, um, so yeah, that, so this will be, Pretty much a wrap up for the overseer's um, house site, and I think the the week is it the week before that we're going to the Mac conference, Liz. Yeah, the sixth through the ninth, I believe. Sixth through the ninth. Okay, very cool. So we'll be able to might um, give some of the um, the uh, uh, papers from that as well, potentially. So cool. Thanks, Liz. And again, there's more on both of these, you know, the, the the garden one and this one, there's more room to sign up. So uh, uh, we'll talk more about that at the end. And the next couple of programs are under uh, Tessa Honeycutt's domain. And the first one is gonna be the um, historic building documentation. And Tessa, are you on? Yep. There you um, go, Tessa, yeah. So um, we're having our historic building documentation expedition again this year. Um, so this is gonna be March 24th through the 29th. Um, so we'll start off the week kind of with some um, lectures on preservation, how to do documentation and um, the history of building technology, building materials. And then we'll kind of move into the field and actually get some hands-on experience documenting two historic structures on site. Uh, for this March expedition, we're going to focus on two fan favorite buildings. So uh, the Bolin Alley, uh, which dates to the 1840s, 1850s. Um, really cool building, definitely pre-DuPont. And then the Archaeology Lab, um, which is a DuPont building. I don't know exactly what year that one dates to off the top of my head, but also it's, it's the Archaeology Office because the lab is a 1980s trailer. <laughs> So the archaeology just office. Want to document that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so not the house. Um, uh, it's what we'll be documenting. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely uh, be on the field assessing threats, uh, making uh, elevation drawings, uh, floor plans uh, for both structures, um, doing photo documentation. And then towards the end of the week, we'll actually use all this information um, to kind of learn how to 3D model historic buildings and how we use 3D technologies uh, to document structures at Montpelier. So yeah, highly recommend uh, if you're interested to sign up. And Tessa has made some incredible uh, building models from all of the, 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 the buildings that have been documented in previous ones. And there's a, um, a story map that she and I are working on that we can send around uh, on that. It kind of zooms into different places, which is fun. So. And then I guess the second program you're doing is going to be a little bit later. It's going to be in June. And, uh, and what, what's that one, Tessa? Yeah, so um, we're I'm launching a three-day masonry workshop in June. I'm very excited about this. Um, so it's going to be a um, intensive workshop where we work with historic masons to learn how to do um, masonry repair. So this is going to be looking at um, identifying failing historic mortar, um, removing it, mixing new lime mortar, and um, repointing our historic brick. Um, so I'm looking to do some lectures on the history of masonry and uh, different masonry techniques um, and what makes historic uh, lime mortar, historic brick. And then we'll uh, be in the field doing a lot of hands-on work. We're looking at uh, both doing work at the Arlington House because a lot of the masonry, especially on the chimney and the foundation, uh, the lime mortar joints are, are failing. And then at the Dr. Madison House. So if you were on 
uh, the last building preservation, uh, building documentation expedition, you saw that a lot of that mortar is just completely gone and the bricks, you can literally just kind of like pull them out of the foundation. So we're going to be going in and uh, repairing a lot of that, that failing uh, mortar work. And the, the really exciting part of this is the masonry, um, there's a group called uh, Dominion Masons or Dominion um, Masonry who are going to be um, working with Tessa on this. And they are, they're the group that built the, um, the chimneys and the foundations for the buildings in the South Yard and then did the restoration work on the uh, temple about uh, six or seven years ago. So it'd be fun to have them back. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe... Tessa, we can convince you on this one to, um, uh, there's a, uh, a, a slaking pit that we excavated back in 2009, and I've got the the materials from that, I'll say curated, <laughs> um, in a special place. We could maybe pull that apart and see what we could find in there. That might be good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, and I will probably uh, work up some special tours for that that workshop as well. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great time. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Cool. Thank you, Tessa. <laughs> And then um, the 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 other huge part of the 2024 season is going to be what we're calling the archaeology of memorialization. And this is uh, the archaeology of memorialization is the archaeology that we're focusing on for the burial ground, uh, the Montpelier burial ground of the enslaved. And archaeology is the the is what the MDC uh, Memorialization Committee is considering as part of memorialization because it's through the archaeology we're able to learn about, you know, learn where the burial ground is, how many um, enslaved individuals are buried there. And very recently, as you all knew, about, about a year ago, the MDC and the Montpelier Foundation got a grant from the um, Mellon Monuments Fund. And this is to uh, design and build a memorial to the enslaved community. And a big part of this process is um, having community input on the design process. So it is uh, really a democratization of the memorial process in many ways. Um, and what we're, as part of that, uh, the very beginning part of this is the archaeology. And so we're going to be you know, engaging both the uh, the descendant community, the local African American community, and of course also the all of our uh, expedition community as well. So we, we're really excited about involving you all in this. And the goals of the um, of the uh, of the archaeology season is surrounding the whole memorialization process. And one of the main um, goals is to make sure that the memorial in its design is adjacent but outside of the area of the proper burial ground. And so that's where one of our goals with this season, a very important goal, is to define essentially the edge of the burial ground in the edge of its closest to the visitor center, uh, because the, um, the, the memorialization committee is looking to have the memorial be placed somewhere between the, the burial ground and Westgate Road. Um, and so with the excavations and the design process, what our ultimate goal is, is to ensure that all of the burials at the burial ground are protected and not disturbed. And so this works into our methodology for this season is that we are, you know, not disturbing any remains at the burial ground um, in the event that we do encounter any um, human remains, that uh, human bone. Uh, that we we have a, a working relationship with the um, Institute for Historical Biology at William and Mary, and they uh, the, the IHB would work with us and the MDC to um, to properly uh, treat any uh, any human remains that we we accidentally encountered. And the biggest risk of this is with uh, groundhogs and uh, the groundhog holes that are in the burial ground. We're actually avoiding any areas of groundhog holes specifically because of this. So, goal is to keep you know, all of the uh, loved ones in the burial ground at rest and undisturbed. But what we want to do, and this is part of the design that the memorializa memorialization committee has in place, is that the, um, the design elements of the burial ground as it was designed and laid out by the, um, by the, by the enslaved community is we want to try to figure that out through the process of archaeology. So not only figure out where the boundaries are, understand whether there was a uh, uh, some kind of fence or enclosure around the burial ground um, in, in, in 
finding where the tops of grave shafts are below disturbed soil, whether it's topsoil or plow zone, understand the placement of burials across the landscape. And uh, we just recently completed a ground penetrating radar survey of the burial ground, and we just got the results back like two weeks ago. And I'm going to be uh, sending out a um, a uh, a story map that we're working on that gives the latest information on that. Um, but with with all of this, we're working very very closely with the Montpelier Descendant Committee in all aspects of you know the um, how we're doing the expeditions, um, how we're um, even you know arranging the everyday uh, workflow on the burial ground, like where we're going to be placing the screens and the uh, the tents and that sort of thing. And, and we're going to be you know doing this in a way so that we keep the space, we enhance the sacredness of this space. And really with a memorialization, a big part of this is to bring the presence of the enslaved burial ground back onto the landscape. And with the with what we're doing with archaeology, we want to make sure that we enhance that process and don't detract from that. So a, a big part of what we're going to be doing this season is really, you know, learning um, as a community how to work in this burial ground space and how to do this in a respectful way and to keep it at, keep it as a sacred space. So we're really excited about this. This is, you know, one of the um, one of the um, penultimate opportunities for us to be as a research department, a community-based um, archaeology department where we work with the descendant community on this and then work with um, with our expedition community as well because you all have you know that you all have worked with us for years on on this kind of democratization of uh, archaeology and this is what we're going to be fitting into what is called the clandage model which a lot of you all have heard of this is a, a concept that was uh, developed by dr. Michael Blakey who's a descendant member of the memorialization or the uh, the MDC. He's going to be doing a, a, a lunch and learn in February, talking about the clientage model, and then also looking at how this fits in with, um, you know, this democratization of uh, archaeology with the citizen science model that we have. Uh, so super excited about this. And how we're kicking off the, the season is um, in early April, we're going to be doing a, um, a week-long expedition where it's going to work, you know, as, as a normal expeditions do. But then in the afternoons, we're going to um, uh, be working with Robert Myers, who just received his um, arboristry certificate, and Harry Puffenberger, who's a master naturalist, on doing tree identifications. Uh, so um, we've got Dennis and his, the metal detector surveys that he's done. He's mapped in all the trees. But we, what we need to do is identify the species and the size of the trees and record certain aspects of these trees. So we're going to be um, you know, learning as a group how to identify these trees from the bark, from the leaves. Um, but we'll do that for a couple of afternoons. And then for most of the time, we're going to be doing excavations. But as part of this arboristry program, uh, we're going to be doing um, hikes on some of the uh, of uh, the old growth forest that we've got on the landscape, uh, get up into the east woods, and then um, uh, talk about how you know you can use arboristry and the history of trees to understand the landscape, and that is a huge part of you know what we're learning about with the burial ground. And this is something we're incorporating into the um, story map that we're going to be uh, sending out uh, very soon. Um, and then, um, and for any of this, if anybody has any questions, just go ahead and you know pop your hand up at uh, any time, or if you want to save to the end, that's fine as well. But um, for the um, the next program, th this one is April seventh through the twelfth, and that's right at the time that you have the the buds start coming out, and that's one of the best time times to identify trees. Um, the second program we're doing is April twenty second through the twenty seventh. And this is a, unlike other programs, it's going to start on Monday afternoon with a dinner at Arlington House, and then it'll be Tuesday through Saturday. And the reason why we're doing this is this is going to be a, a combination program of both archaeology of memorialization and then also one of the uh, a, a cooking program like we did last year with Jerome Bias. And this year we are, we, Jerome is going to be leading this program. So the first two days of the program uh, the Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be um, archaeology of memorialization. So doing archaeology in the burial ground. 
And then the next three days, the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, participants will be learning how to do open hearth cooking. And so um, for on Wednesday, um, I'm sorry, on Thursday, uh, the, 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 well, the cooking for this program is really going to focus on the uh, cooking as done by the enslaved community uh, for their, for themselves, you know, either for cooking during the, for, um, uh, for workday meals. And then the final part of the cooking program would be cooking for a uh, special um, uh, occasion, such as a burial. And so on Thursday, the cooking that Jerome is going to lead folks on is going to be focused on cooking a meal that would be typical of the uh, the workday, so a one uh, a one pot stew, and then we're going to be uh, bringing that out to the uh, um, to the the home farm for uh, consumption to kind of model a process of how these would be moved across the landscape and how different parts of the landscape of the community would have been doing cooking. And then Friday, what uh, we'll be doing is doing uh, basically a a, a a dry run of the Saturday dinner. And so this would be, you know, learning how to do uh, some of the more specialized uh, baking and cooking. And then Saturday is going to be the cooking for a meal that's going to be for a, a, a special occasion. And what Saturday is, is going to be two things going on on Saturday. For the folks that are coming on the week-long program, you all are going to be doing cooking in the South Yard for a dinner that's going to happen at the end of the day. And then on and on Saturday, at the same time that's happening, um, we're going to be holding, uh, hosting an open house, which is called uh, Breaking Ground and Breaking Bread, where we're inviting members of the descendant community, the local African-American community, um, both boards of the, of the Montpelier Foundation and the uh, um, MDC, to spend a day at the um, at the burial ground doing excavations. We're going to start the day on the 27th with a libation ceremony in the morning and then doing archaeology throughout the day. And then it will break um, uh, from the site around 2.30 or 3 o'clock to ha have folks get cleaned up. And then we're going to um, we're going to join together in the South Yard for a uh, meal that the participants on the week long program have fixed. So basically, we're modeling this based on what we did last uh, April, where um, participants in the cooking program will spend two days learning about cooking. And then the third day, you all are essentially the chefs who will be working under the direction of Jerome Bias in preparing this meal for about 60 to 70 people. So it's a real opportunity to learn firsthand uh, you know, techniques of 18th and 19th century cooking and then um, also learn about this from, you know, from the perspective of the enslaved community. Uh, previous cooking programs that Jerome has done with us um, has focused on the work that the enslaved community did in preparing a meal that would have been served to the Madisons and their guests. The, this program is focused on the cooking and the meals that would have been designed for the enslaved community. And this all works into the the archaeology of memorialization, because, you know, we're, we're taking the perspective of, you know, a meal again, that, you know, potentially could have been prepared for, a, you know, a funeral or a um, uh, some of the celebratory events that would have been associated with uh, end of life. So that's the that's the April program. And again, that that Saturday, uh, April 27th is going to be a big day um, with, you know, being a community day that breaking, br breaking ground and breaking bread. Um, and it'll be one that'll be really exciting. And there's options for this where if you just want to come on on the Saturday for the community day, um, there's ways to take part in that or just the three day program, the 25th through the 27th. But we're encouraging people to come for the whole week because that gives you a much broader context for all for all of this. Um, and then the the next when we get into after April, we're getting into our regular uh, programs. The May expedition is just about full. That's the the May uh, I think the second through the seventh. Liz or Chris, do you all have the dates for that? And that you're correct. Um, I we had removed it after you told me it was full. Um, 
Yeah. And it's, it, 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 as Chris mentioned, it's, I'm going to put in air quotes with my fingers here, it's full. We have um, like 17 people who have registered, but not everybody has paid their deposit, which is oftentimes a, a way to secure the place. So we're, we're going to be, we're, um, uh, we don't have a, a program um, a coordinator right now uh, who's, who's full-time like uh, Melissa was, but we do have Steve, um, Stephen Bill, Billy, who you might have met on one of the expeditions this past year, he's um, uh, filling that role. And, and he and I are working together to get people registered and get all the information out to folks. So, um, but yeah, I'll talk more about the registration process after all this. Matt, but, oh. Matt what were the dates on that? Mine, the thing I printed out says six through 10, which that's a Monday. Chris, just gave a thumbs up on that yeah. game. Yes, yes. The tenth. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. It, that's right. It's the 6th through the 10th. That 6th is, is a Monday. Well, that 5th through the 10th then. So, <laughs> <laughs> arriving on Sunday, like the normal expedition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. But right after the May program, we've got the field school that goes from May 22nd through June 30th. And so uh, we're excited about that one. We've got about 50 students who have um, who are applying for the field school. And Chris and Liz are going to be going through that application process uh, very soon. We're actually, if any uh, potential students are um, on the call today, we, uh, we've got a... Um, a field school application meeting that's coming up, I think next week. So for that, so, uh, and then after the uh, the field school, what we've got is the, uh, the high school program and the high school program is July 8th through the 12th. And this is our, our high school program that we've run every year. Um, we, uh, there it's for uh, students uh, 16 um, and uh, up, and students who are under 16 need to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. But in this, what we do is uh, it's specifically focused, uh, you know, to help students understand what not only what archaeology is about, but also what a career in archaeology uh, is. So you'll be working with um, with the staff. Uh, we'll do a, um, a lecture on, um, you know, what the um, your the career uh, process is for uh, becoming an archaeologist. What sort of courses to take and how to apply for undergraduate for this this kind of thing. And we've had a number of students have applied, and we've even supplied letters of recommendation for them for undergraduates. So it's a basically a, a way for high school students to really join a professional um, uh, crew and be part of a. Um, you know, a, a working environment uh, in archaeology. And a lot of folks have, we've had parents who said when they're, 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 their kids have gone through this program that they've, even, they've noticed a difference in terms of their, you know, how they, they're thinking about their life. So it's, uh, it's one that's really, we've really enjoyed and has made a big difference with students that have come on this. Um, and for these programs, um, the, for the high school program, we've got July 8th through the 12th. We also have a program August 4th through the 9th, and that used to um, be, we used to have that be a high school program as well, but there's so many schools that are now starting so much earlier that um, some it's that one's kind of hit or miss. But this high school program, again, we this is specifically geared towards high school students, but we also have college students that take part in this and parents that come with their kids. So we've got a lot of options there. Um, some of the other programs this summer is the Archaeology in the Community Program, July 21st through 26th. That's a teacher program for teachers that want to, you know, use archaeology in their classroom. So if you know any teachers, uh, we have scholarships available for this. Um, you know, both uh, that we're getting through at the Archaeology in the Community um, nonprofit is, is applying for, and that also that we're taking, you know, donations for to allow teachers to come on that program. So if you know any teachers in your life, uh, Gail and Tony, you might know a couple of these. <laughs> um, have them come on this uh, on this program. Um, and then our one of the last programs we have in in the in the fall is the JMU program, August 11th through the 16th, and that's for James James Madison University 
student teachers, but we're also opening up that to the public as well. So we've, we've got a, um, these last two programs in August are uh, open to the public. Um, and uh, Chris, do you have anything to add to add to this? I got you in mid mid lunch. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> That's okay. Um, no, you you covered it all. Um, I think the fall programs, which are on the next slide, are the more kind of wide open programs that we have available. Yeah, yeah, we um, uh, definitely have a lot of spots left in the summer. These summer programs for signups, and we're still looking for some there. But then, yeah, the fall, you know, is is our uh, along with the spring or our traditional um, uh, programs for the, where a lot of people attend. So these are available for signing up. And uh, what um, uh, Steve and um, Chris and Liz and I are working on uh, reading materials for all of these programs, and we're going to be sending those out. We're working with the, the Senate community or advisory group on, on those readings, and we'll be getting those out uh, shortly. But for the fall programs, um, the, uh, um, the September 15th through the 20th, that's our alumni uh, program. And then the others are, you know, mix of per mix of uh, programs that people attend, you know, both alumni and uh, and newbies. So um, and for all these, what we're going to be looking to do is uh, based on who's attending and, and and where what people have done before is try to uh, try to add some new uh, tours for these. Um, and what's what's great about, you know, the archaeology of memorialization is that this is going to be a whole new focus on what we're talking about with both the landscape and the um, and the analysis that we're doing of of artifacts and and the site, so we're going to have a have some uh, new tours for you all to experience um, with with all this. So for all that, Elvis, does anybody have any questions either about the you know this program in early April archaeology of arboristry or the the cooking program or any of the any of the others? Yeah, Gail. I think you locked up, Gail. Oh, no. Is there the attempt to clear out uh, any types of, of small trees or stuff that would not have been there at that time? Or is it just as is? Oh, for the burial ground, we've done a lot of uh, br brush clearing uh, to allow the ground penetrating radar and the metal detector surveys to happen. But I think for um, the restoration work at the burial ground, that's something that the um, memorialization subcommittee is working on and the design firm that the MDC is going to be hiring is going to be working on, but it'll be informed by the archaeology. So exactly, you know, how the burial ground is going to um you know, would have looked back in the day in the early, the late 18th, early 19th century. That's what we're trying to figure out with the archaeology. So a lot of and questions will, left. Will the student activity during the summer, will they all be working in that same area too? Yeah, the, the, um, all the programs we're doing, including the field school this year, are focused on the, on the burial ground. And again, one of the first things we're doing is trying to define that eastern edge of the burial ground um and again I, i've got a we're working on a story map right now a web a web page for you all to um to review um that talks about you know what we found during the 2023 surveys both the metal detector surveys and the ground penetrating radar and then the area that we're going to be focusing on for the 2024 season Does thank that you your question gail yes thank you all right nice thank you And the, again, I mentioned that for registering for the programs, you can go to www.montpelier.org slash dig or archaeology. And what, how we're doing the registrations this year is basically you're to register for the program, you fill out a, a Google form. And then there is a, a, a link that's sent for the payment. But then um, what we're doing first is having you all 
fill out a, um, a, a personal information form as well. So we're trying to, um, trying to make the process a little more automated and responsive using Google Forms. And we're, we're, we're in the very tail end of getting all this set. Um, in fact, right after this meeting, um, uh, Stephen and I are, are meeting to go over the final process for this. So, and it's, it's nice to have it be in the Google Form system because that's totally under our, con our control. Um, and let's see. Um, oh, and then, um, and then uh, Lavonda, you asked, is DC a possibility for local descendant community? If you're talking about Washington, DC, um, uh, absolutely, Lavonda. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, the, for the, um, the, you know, the, the descendant community and the, um, local community, African-American community, we're looking at a, a, a very broad, uh, definition of that for these, uh, for these programs. I hope I answered that question. Um, oh, and then Mark asks, we'll, we'll be doing a, uh, roasting, doing a roast like we did in April. Yes, we are. And, uh, really excited uh to to be doing that again so um it looks like chris answered most of these questions um yeah did i miss anything yeah uh pam hello pam oh pam you're muted hey for the for the one with the trees and everything out to the, into the woods, how much hiking and everything is there involved with it? Because it sounds interesting to me, but. We will make that um, uh, participant centered, meaning if, uh, if you're coming on the program, Pam, we'll make it so that you can get out there. Okay, if thanks. Means, if it means driving you out in my Jeep, we'll do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds like a plan. Thank you. Which I would like. I always like driving in the woods in my Jeep. So, okay, thanks. As as one of our um, our uh, mo's is to make all of this accessible. Let's see. Oh, and Donna, you are welcome to move into Arlington House. So. <laughs> Um, and then Christy asked, can you give a few more details about the high school, what the high school day looks like? Yeah, for that, uh, Christy, um, it's pretty much like a, our regular expeditions where we uh, do the tours in the morning and then archaeology in the late morning and early afternoon. Um, and I, again, probably we um, will have some special uh, lectures during that week to have to, to help guide students on how to you know get get their career started in archaeology so that's an important part of that oh and esther asking about do we bring any cooking paraphernalia yes absolutely bring your apron uh for the april program absolutely hey carolyn you have your hand up yes and you're muted carolyn here. Um, in the masonry program, the, the participants would be taught how to do um, pointing of, of the masonry, how, because um, although I grew up around building trades, I was never taught. And in my community, there is a barn wall that I'd very much like to preserve from the 1860s and the, the mortar is crumbling and I would like to participate in in restoring that and so if I gain some expertise uh, with with your workshop that may spur me to to do other work. Tessa, it looks like you've got someone there. 
Yeah, so we're definitely going to um, learn how to not only remove a uh, mortar that's failing, we're going to learn how to mix historic lime mortar, uh, what supplies you would need, um, what techniques to use to um, then repoint the mortar joints. So yeah, so you should get a good overview of how to how to repoint um, historic mortar and um, the do's and the don'ts of of the process. Thanks. And I'm looking through to see if I missed any questions. Liz or Chris, do you see, did we catch everything? I believe so. And Chris or Liz, do you have anything else to add? The only thing I'll add, I think you've covered it pretty well, but um, it one of the things that we are doing um, this season is you'll notice that there will be more readings or uh, resources that we provide because there's a lot of extra protocols to making sure that we um, treat the space with the sacredness that it deserves. Um, and so just just for those of you who have been on programs before, do pay attention to, to that um, process. And as Chris mentioned, we're, we're re reviewing those with uh, an advisory group we have with the MDC, and uh, I will be getting those out shortly. All right. Well, we'll appreciate. It. Does anybody else have any other other, other questions? I think we got everything uh, covered. We're we're excited, really excited about this season, and we wanted to um, give an opportunity for you all to uh, really be able to see all the programs we have in one single um, in one single uh, 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 image in terms of uh, how they all link together. Uh, but again, that this the archaeology of memorialization that's going to start in uh, in April. And uh, the programs that we have before, like the March program for the lab program, is going to be wrapping up the overseer's site. And then we get some, some of the other programs, like the garden program that we're experimenting with for the uh, for the first time and are very excited about. So, but, um, well, what we'll do is, is, is we get um, more information, we'll send it out to you through our, uh, our, our email list. And if you have anybody has any particular questions they have and they think of later, go ahead and send them to Dig, um, and we'll uh, answer them through that. But really excited to to see you all this year. Uh, we're going to have an exciting year with the work we're doing, and hope you all can uh, be part of it and see, see you all soon. So, so bye. all of these are on the website. Yeah, these are all on the website, and I'll send a link to to these programs uh, to everybody right after this. So, all right. What an exciting year! Oh, and unless uh, Wayne is not going to be on the masonry program, but a cousin of of his, Mike Audrick, is going to be uh, part of that. So, good to see you, Les. All right, thanks. All right, good seeing everybody. Bye bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm.